Have you ever driven past a major construction project and seen cranes, concrete trucks, earth moving equipment, and multiple different trades all working at a million miles an hour? Have you ever wondered how anybody could possibly work out a budget for a project like this? Well, if you've answered yes to any of these questions, then this course is designed just for you. My name is Tim. And I'm a project engineer with lots of experience on the design and construction of major infrastructure projects. I've been building short courses to teach the fundamental construction management skills to engineers and other construction management professionals. So far, we've had over a thousand students enroll in our courses. Each course is loaded with hours of content and practice activities to make sure you're equipped with the skills you need to excel at your job. This short video is an extract of our course on construction cost estimating and management, where we'll talk about the construction cost estimating process and how to accurately estimate construction costs. If you find this video interesting and useful, check out the link in the below description to our complete Udemy course on construction cost estimating and management. Now we have a better understanding of what estimating is, the types of estimating and the types of costs we're required to estimate. Let's revisit the estimating process in more detail. In this section, we'll go through the estimating process, how to estimate direct and indirect costs, and summarizing the estimate. Finally, we'll look at the different software estimating tools to do this. Let's go back to looking at our diagram we introduced in the introduction of the estimating process. The basic structure of our cost estimate will be quantifying direct and indirect costs, combining these to get our total project costs. We'll then apply a markup to cover our profit margin and corporate overheads to get the price we submit to the client. The first step in the estimating process will be to determine direct costs. Direct costs will always form the bulk of the project costs. Usually over 70% of the total project costs will be direct costs. To determine our direct costs, we'll need to develop our work breakdown structure and determine all the work required to complete, develop our delivery so solution, so work out how we're going to complete the works, then quantify the costs for each scope item, so work out the labour, plant, materials and subcontract costs for each of these. Next, we need to determine our indirect costs. These will consist of preliminaries, overheads and our risk and opportunity. We'll quantify our preliminary costs based on identifying all of our preliminary cost items, quantifying them. We'll determine our overhead costs by creating our project organisation chart and estimating staff salaries. And finally, we'll work out what contingency we need to allow for by developing our risk and opportunity register. We'll then combine all these costs to get our total project cost apply a markup to this cost to cover the business profit margin and corporate overheads, review our estimate, fill out the client pricing schedule, and then submit it to the client. Let's now look at direct cost estimating in a little bit more detail. Direct cost estimating can be broken down into three simple fundamental steps. Number one, understand the scope. Number two, establish the delivery methodology, and number three, estimate the costs. In step one, we need to work out everything we need to accomplish to complete the project. What is everything we need to do to finish and hand over the project to the client? This involves creating the work breakdown structure and identifying all the unique project deliverables. These will be summarized into work packages. Next, we need to do a quantity takeoff and determine for each work package the quantum of work to be completed. For example, if we have a work package from, for subsurface drainage pipe install, how many lineal meters of drainage are required? In step two, we need to establish our delivery methodology. How are we going to complete the required deliverables? This involves developing our construction methodology. Step two will be heavily related to procurement and the development of the project schedule. We'll put a lot of focus on the timing and resource requirements needed to complete the work. By the end of step two, for each package, we should know whether we plan on subcontracting or self-performing the works and exactly how we plan on delivering the work package. 
And finally, in step three, now we know what has to be done and how we are planning on doing it, we can estimate costs. How much money do we need to complete each work package? For our self-perform costs, this will require us to estimate our productivities, our labour, plant and materials. When using subcontractors to complete the works, we'll need to get quotes from subcontractors and suppliers. It's worth noting that all these steps are iterative, meaning they won't exactly occur in the order and the results we get from each stage will impact the previous step. For example, as we're going through and establishing the delivery methodology, we'll probably realise we've missed some scope and have to go back to step one. Or as we're estimating costs, we may realise we can save a lot of money by self-performing the works and go back and change our delivery methodology. We'll go through a slightly different process when estimating our indirect costs, and the process will vary depending on the type of indirect costs we are estimating. When trying to work out our risk and opportunities, and ultimately what contingency funds we need to have, we'll need to complete workshops to identify all the risk and opportunities and work out what mitigations we're going to put in place. Not all mitigations will require us to hold contingency. For example, we may have commercial mitigations in place that don't require holding contingency, contingency funds. For our preliminaries or working out our site running costs, we'll generally use checklists. For example, most companies will have a site setup checklist which will require us to go through and check we've got everything covered, such as toilets, crib sheds, waste disposal, security, power, and so on. For our overhead costs, we'll need to create a project organization chart. This will tell us how many engineers we need, community and stakeholder managers, environmental managers, and so on. Our head contract will also tell us what insurances and securities we are required to hold so we can quantify those. Finally, to summarize the estimate, we'll need to go through the process of reviewing and translating our estimate into a format where we can submit it to our client. We'll need to get approval from upper management and our estimate independently reviewed. As discussed, this will likely happen through top-down and parametric checks. The management staff at our company, they want to be confident that the project will generate a profit before they submit anything to a client. Remember, a tender submission is contractually binding. If we've underestimated costs, we can turn around in six months' time when we're losing millions of dollars. Sorry, if, we're, if we've underestimated costs, we can't turn around in six months' time when we're losing millions of dollars and simply ask the client for more money. We also need to understand our cash flow. If you've ever done any finance, you'll understand the concept of the cost of capital. Basically, what this means is that if there is a delay between incurring costs and getting paid, we'll have to make up this by sourcing capital from somewhere. Sourcing capital incurs financial costs. Therefore, we need to complete a cash flow analysis. Therefore, we need to complete a cash flow analysis to, to ensure we are going to be cash positive, meaning our revenue will be coming in to cover our costs. We ensure we are cash, cash positive by strategically filling out the pricing schedule. We want to front load items like mobilization to ensure our project is always cash positive. We also need to logically fill out the pricing schedule and spread our indirect costs across our direct costs. The pricing schedule may be used at a base, as a basis for including items or descoping de items in the future. Finally, let's look at some of the tools we use to complete our estimates. Estimates are usually, built, are usually done in purpose-built estimating software. I've used Candy before. This is a special type of estimating software that has a structured process for collating and building cost estimates. Check out some YouTube tutorials if you're interested to see how it works. It's super useful. For this course, as most people don't have access to Candy, we're going to go through and build up our cost estimate in Microsoft Excel. Excel works fine for less complicated projects, but the problem with it is we'll have to set up a pricing model and it's easy to make mistakes and calculate things incorrectly. And with that, we've now completed our introduction to estimating. Let's now move on to section 2.2, where we're going to dive into the detail 
of how to calculate direct costs.